Okay, we're rolling. Okay, um, this is an interview with William Mark in... M. William Mark. M. William Mark. <laughs> Jamaica Avenue <laughs> Armory, Queens, New York, uh, August 8th, 2002, approximately 9.15 a.m. The interviewer is Michael Russert. Um, could you tell us your full name and your place of birth and date of birth, please? Yeah, M. William Mark. And uh, I was born at uh, 168 uh, East Broadway in New York City. And that was uh, 11517. Okay. What was your education before you went into the military service? Before my education, well, I went through high school and uh, then uh, when, I, when I was in the reserves, I finished my college career in BEE. Um, did you have, have any occupations prior to your military service? Occupations? <clears throat> well, I had several jobs. One was with Cornhole Marks, and they were uh, selling peace goods to a different uh, dress goods company. And then, uh, <laughs> shortly after, uh, uh, we were supposed to serve about a year in the service at that time. This was before World War II. And uh, I was in the service at Camp Croft in North Carolina. I was there and I, basically, I had basic training over there. And then later on, they saw where I was, uh, well, mechanically inclined, so they sent me to, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, <clears throat> it was, uh, it was uh, a school that taught uh, uh, a wire and telephone and, uh, and telegraph, and I was learning to climb poles. <laughs> I was there for six weeks, and then uh, after I got my training, they sent me to Fort Dix, and I was supposed to join the National Guard, the 44th Division. I don't know where they are now. <laughs> so uh, they were coming back on, on maneuvers, and they, fig they figured they had all the stripes. <laughs> They figured, well, oh, they got recruits now, so uh, they'll put us in on details. So when, one week I was on fire detail, another week I was on KP, another week I was on guard duty, and I was doing everything but, I was doing everything but what I was trained for. And then the, during the week, they all got leave. And we had to stay at the post, and then all of a sudden the war broke out, <laughs> the Japanese attacked us. <laughs> and boy, it was turmoil all over the place. And they, uh, they cut on a Springfield rifle, and I never had a rifle before. And they gave me a clip, uh, about six bullets, I said, and they had me guard a tower, a water tower, and they said, shoot to kill if you, <laughs> you can identify it. Boy, this was the real thing because they didn't know the Japanese were attacking us. Uh, as it happened, nothing happened, and uh, and then I was a, I was connected with headquarters company. Headquarters company, they had all the specialists in the company, and uh, they make me do uh, several different things, like I told them. And uh, they had all the stripes, and uh, so uh, the colonel needed an orderly, <laughs> and they picked on me. And I don't know why they picked on me, but they figured uh, I would, that the colonel needs an orderly, and if the colonel needed water, I, I, if, if I should pick, pick up the water for him, maybe a mile away, I'd have to go pick up the water for him. 
And he had a private house, it was kind of Mantelas Eddy, if I remember correctly. And uh, I didn't know what to do, so I shined his boots and I made the, I cleaned up the bathtub. And on the table there was a bunch of coins. I put all the coins together and I put it on. Maybe they, they, they swiped, the, the, the Pupius Sogolus must have swiped the coins, I don't know. But anyway, I cleaned up the house and I was just waiting for him to come. And I was just standing there after the house was cleaned up. Finally, uh, the, uh, the, the colonel had a, a chauffeur, you know, and he came to me. And he says, you didn't eat yet? <laughs> he sent me to the, to the kitchen and boy, I was the colonel's order and they gave me anything that I wanted to eat. And shortly after, they, uh, like I told you, I had, they had me do a lot of the things. And uh, about three weeks later, <clears throat> they were moving they were moving south to Camp Claiborne, Louisiana. And I guess they had to train other troops, you know, that was kind of recruits. And I had to put up this tent, and boy, I was tired, and I fell asleep under a truck, and it was snow on the ground. <laughs> and they were looking for me, and finally they found me. I said, the colonel has to move, we have to move out. So uh, I got the tent down, and I said, boy, this is not for me. When we got down to Camp Claiborne, uh, we were supposed to train other troops, and uh, I see that this was my, not my, my, for my liking, so I, I told the, well, the Japanese was moved up the, from, the, from the west coast, of, as I remember, and we had to uh, guard them in a way, and uh, they look like nice people, but uh, in a way, they, they were Japanese, and they were afraid uh, they might uh, help out the Japanese uh, to, uh, invade the West Coast. As it happened, uh, nothing happened, and uh, let's see if I remember correctly. Uh, well, anyway, when we got to get out of the Cape Clay on Louis Louisiana. Tom, you, were, was, you were there while the Japanese were interred there? These were... No, the Japanese, were, we were on the way uh, down to Camp Claiborne. They, oh. they were moving the Japanese. I didn't know where. Oh, okay. So uh, after a while, after a while, like I see, it wasn't for me. But anyway, uh, it looked like they had to have us go to the west coast, I guess, to, to protect the uh, coast from the, the Japanese coming in. That there was a lot of time, turmoil, if it says. And uh, when we got there, uh, I figured that this outfit is not for me. Maybe I could get out. So when I, went, I was connected with headquarters company, they said, after all the training we gave you, <laughs> They wouldn't let me go. I mean, they needed uh, in Fort Lewis, Washington. That's that's where we uh, landed up initially, and uh, it seemed like like they they needed uh, somebody on uh, who was uh, a radar operator. So I figured I might as well get trained for radar operator. So I went up to the colonel. I told him I'd like to become a radar operator. She said, well, if that's what you like, we'll send you to school. So when I got to school, <laughs> all the guys, you know, they were musicians. And uh, the da 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 And I was not a musician. And I had to count the dots and dashes. And they, did, they, they would go by the sound, and they would know what, what, what letters it was. But anyway, I was able to take over 20 ways a minute just counting dots and dashes. And I graduated. And uh, I don't know, shortly after, they, uh, the, the, the captain of the headquarters company didn't want to let me go because I was trained in different things. And uh, <coughs> uh, as I remember, 
they, uh, they put us on, a, they put my outfit on on a firing line. They wanted us to get us some fire practice. I guess they were going to move on out in the Pacific. So uh, while I was there, <coughs> they called me and I said, oh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of the story. I was in a serviceman's, uh, 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 in a serviceman's club and uh, I see a picture on the wall that they needed a lot of men in the Air Force. So uh, I figured, what have I got to lose in order to get out? So uh, I went, uh, when I got the uh, leave, I went to the, uh, I got training in the Air Force and uh, they gave me a fiscal training and uh, a lot of other, uh, the descriptive training. And uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. And anyway, we were out on that west coast where we were doing, doing uh, uh, target practice. And all of a sudden, they, uh, the staff sergeant came out looking for me and he says, Boy, they want the end at quarters right away, right away. I said, She missed. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I don't know, but they want you over the headquarters. And I got over the headquarters. I said, Boy, you're, good. you're joining the Air Force. <laughs> I was glad to get out. <laughs> so, uh, at Fort Lewis, Washington, I was a pretty handy man. I was a, sh a chauffeur. And, uh, and I guess uh, they needed a chauffeur for, uh, for Reverly uh, to, to drive the guys out. And they to put up at the flag. And, uh, at the daytime and take it down at that time and I was a chauffeur. So I liked my job very much. But anyway, but they were collecting a lot of personnel for the Air Force, Fort Lewis, Washington. And uh, I'm trying to remember. Well, I was at Fort Lewis, Washington. Uh, I was uh, uh, trying to remember a lot of things. So uh, we were there for, I don't know, maybe a couple of months. But anyway, I was a chauffeur on, on this uh, three-quarter wagon and uh, taking these guys out in the, the daytime, the nighttime. And uh, then after we, they got enough men to, to, for the Air Force, they shipped us out to Santa Ana, California. How long were you in the Guard in the 44th? In the 4th? I don't know, it was over a year. Mm -hmm. Over a year. So you went in in what year? Uh, uh, August the 1st, 1941. That was the way I went in. And then uh, you went into the Air Force? And then uh, I was connected to, to, I was supposed to get training in the Air Force. But it took a long while till they got enough guys together and they sent us to Santa Ana, California. And there we were put up in tents and uh, we got a lot of physical training. And then uh, we got a lot of uh, written uh, tests and uh, they discovered that most of the guys, they, uh, <laughs> for pilot training. And the next bunch of guys, um, small percentage of the guys for bombardier training and a very small portion of the guys they had for navigation training and they picked on me <laughs> so then uh, they shipped us out to uh, uh, Texas I forget where uh, Texas but anyway I started my training in uh, San Marcos, Texas. We were the first first class to go through. And I managed to, uh, to pass all the examinations, which was about three months. And then they sent us to uh, navigation to school uh, thereafter at San Marcos, Texas. And we were there for five months. At that time, we were flying real airplanes. <laughs> what kind of planes did you train in? Well, uh, they were they were British planes, I think they were twin-engine trains, 
and they had three seats for the navigator. The lead navigator was supposed, supposed, supposed to, it was an observer, and the second navigator was supposed to tell him what to do. And uh, the third navigator, they, they rotated us. I wasn't so good, but every time I got up in the air, I was better than everybody else. <laughs> <clears throat> and they couldn't believe it. Anyway, I'm making my story short. Uh, they couldn't believe that I was so good up in the air and yet on and, 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 and the ground. I was not so good. So they took me over in a navigation flight. This was in the middle of the night. And by the stars, I was supposed to take them. And, and, and I got a zero mission, zero right on the target. Boy, this guy is good. <laughs> so they made me a second lieutenant. And for most of the guys I met that, that passed the exam, they made pre-flight uh, officers. So uh, they were like officers, but and they're not really officers. And they made me a second lieutenant. Uh, then uh, I got more training. Uh, and then they sent me out to Walla Walla, Walla, Walla Washington State. Do you know where it is in Washington State? Uh, and we were supposed to go into uh, real training for uh, pre-flight training for, uh, before we went into the war. So, uh, I don't know, in the early part, I was doing that. I was I going through this training. And then, uh, I suppose, in South Dakota, a, a navigator, I don't know, somehow he, he, he wasn't fit to go to overseas and all, and they needed another navigator, and they picked on me. <laughs> so when they got them, I got down there in South Dakota, they, they said, you didn't have any training at all? So the next day they set me up for target practice on, uh, on an airplane. And uh, this crew, uh, then they, uh, I don't know what was on, uh, on the East Coast, and uh, I don't forget it, Newport News, I think it was. Uh, they were sending us out. We don't know where, we, where we're going to go. We went out on Liberty ships instead of flying over went out on Liberty ships. And in the dark, you know, we were afraid that the submarines were going to attack us. But uh, it took us about three weeks and we landed in uh, Casablanca in South Africa. So, uh, <coughs> a lot of ships were sunk over there and all. And uh, <laughs> they were showing us movies in the uh, movie uh, Casablanca, and we were right in Casablanca. <laughs> and this was in the middle of the night. And uh, it was very funny. We were looking for Rick's place, I don't know. So I was there for a day or two, I don't know. And the next day, uh, they flew us to uh, Algiers uh, in, uh, in, South, uh, in, uh, in Africa. And I was there for about a day or two, and then from there we went to uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia, we were uh, we were supposed to be volunteers, but not we weren't flying with a crew. And every time they needed something, they had a battle uh, on a, a battle station who was supposed to fly in the next mission. And I wasn't on it. In the middle of the night, they'd wake me up. They said, <laughs> the navigator just backed out. He probably, <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. So I was with, with different crews. And I flew, uh, I'm uh, running ahead of the time. But uh, I flew 15 missions. And uh, in the southern Flans, and uh, in Italy, and uh, Bulgaria, and uh, in the middle of the Europe, and finally, <laughs> I was flying B-17s at that time, and I was a navigator. And, uh, well, one of the missions I remember I was on, uh, we got the weather reports, and the weather reports were not too good. And uh, 
the weather report we got, we got, uh, anyway, we were flying on a mission to Bulgaria, Bulgaria. I'm trying to recollect the, what, the, what was happening. And uh, the weather was very bad, and two engines were failing. We were flying B-17s. <laughs> and the group was uh, getting ahead of us, and uh, the engines were failing. So the uh, pilot told me uh, he's got to drop the bombs, who knows where, where it landed, to keep up with the, with, with the group. And then the, the oxygen was gone out, and a lot of things was happening to the plane. And he says, well, you got to get us home. So uh, we turned back, and we were flying home. And uh, the, uh, the co-pilot came down to see what I was doing. Because we should have got, we should have got back, back to Italy. We were saying, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, flying it in it. If you open it, I'm trying to remember several things. And anyway, uh, uh, our engines were failing, and our uh, oxygen was going out. And it was very bad weather, and this co-pilot came down to see what I was doing. And every time we came down below the clouds, we saw mountains, and it's slow cape mountains. <laughs> and we got to get up. And uh, according to my figure, I, was, I had the right course. But uh, an hour later, I seemed like an hour later, I was keeping track of uh, dead reckoning. And uh, I, I figured that we'd have to get back. We started, incidentally, we, I was, uh, and initially when I went over, we were flying out of uh, Tripoli, Ethiopia. After five missions, they moved us up to, to Italy. And uh, I figured that <laughs> according to my uh, navigation, I should have been across Italy and I should be flying back to, <laughs> to North Africa. But, you know, we got bad, bad weather reports and we had to come down. Uh, we came down and we were flying maybe 15 feet up, 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 above, the, uh, above the water in case we had a ditch. And uh, all of a sudden, I recognized uh, that, uh, we were, that uh, we were flying, <laughs> that uh, the coastline was recognizable as uh, Italy. And, uh, boy, we got down there, and I was very happy to, to see that we got down. And the staff was out there, and it was raining, pouring. And we came down there, and he says, what happened to the group? I said, I don't know, we left them behind. And later on I found out they went down in the Yugoslavia and they went down in the, in the, in the, in the Adriatic Sea. Boy, we were lucky to get back. And for that time, the co-pilot said, boy, he don't want to fly with nobody else but me. <laughs> anyway, uh, we hit targets in uh, southern France. And uh, and uh, northern Italy and uh, and Bulgaria and uh, finally uh, our plane was shot down. We were you tell me, before you get to that, you said you, I'm reading here you had a story about one of your gunners being wounded at one of the flights. Yeah, yeah, one of the gunners. I'm getting ahead of myself, flying up to France and. Uh, we got a lot of flak, and then one of them on the gunners got hit by flak, and he was bleeding profusely. So the bombardier went out to help him, and he came back, and he wanted my clothing. We had heavy clothing at that time, and I took off my clothing, and I gave it to him, and boy, I was freezing. And uh, it was a bloody mess. And, uh, when we got back, I don't know what happened to him, but anyway, I, uh, I'm trying to re recollect some of my stories. And anyway, 
they wanted to give him back my my flight the uh, my flight suit. No, it was all bloody a mess and bloody mess. So they gave me another set of clothing. And uh, I'm trying to recollect some of the things. So. Uh, I was flying with this, with this mission, and uh, I'm trying to recollect some of the things that have happened. In any event, in any event, uh, on my uh, 15th mission, no, it's 20th mission, the 20th mission, uh, my plane was all disabled. And uh, one of the engines was on fire, and we had to bail out. Do you know what, what was your mission? Where were you? I was a navigator. Where were you flying to? I was uh, on that time. I was flying uh, over the Alps. We were flying to. Uh, uh, I don't remember, but it was uh, one of the targets was in uh, in Austria, and. Uh, <clears throat> Try to recollect some of the things, but anyway, the, we had to get out, and I never knew I had that bail out. <laughs> I was, the, but but you had to get out. You know, it was a sad story, and uh, the, I could see the pilot pulling on my leg, and he bailed out. You know, you do things automatically. And uh, I bailed out, and I uh, and I had my oxygen mask on, and I I couldn't see I couldn't see uh, very well in the air, but I could see the ground below me, and uh, I could hear a plane coming towards me. I figured, boy, I've had it. Maybe he's going to shoot me down. <laughs> and he went run under me, and then. Uh, I figured he'd leave me alone. Then I, I can hear him in the back coming back towards me. We was flying over, over 20,000 feet at that time. And uh, he flew over me and he, I thought he was going to shoot me down. And then he's coming back again at, at, at me and I don't know. I, I guess he figured I was dead. I don't know. But uh, I could just see the ground was slow on the ground. And uh, it took me a long time to get down, but he didn't shoot me. And uh, when I got on the ground, uh, my radio operator landed not too far from me. He came to me for help. <laughs> it was over, I was in an enemy territory. So uh, what can I do? He said, hold on. And they tried to separate us. I, I'm getting to get ahead of my story. Because I could see on the ground, they were circling around. They didn't know whether I was armed or not. But then when I came down, they could see that I wasn't armed. So they, uh, they gave, they were coming close to me. And this uh, radar operator was coming close to me. And uh, I told him to get rid of all of his uh, notes on the, on the radar operator. And they was trying to separate us. I suppose the, they were getting, uh, uh, you know, they would get, uh, I don't know, preference. And, were these yeah. German troops that captured you? Uh, I, I suppose they were German troops. So uh, he didn't want to let go of me. So they had to take us together in a cart. And they took us, uh, I could have escaped at that time, but where was I going to go? Where there was snow on the ground. <laughs> and I figured I might as well stay together with the group. Incidentally, I'm Jewish. And I figured if I had, uh, got separated from this group, I would, they would kill me. So I stayed in with this group. And uh, initially, uh, they went through one of the towns with that we bombed out and I could see a mass destruction and I figured boy these guys are gonna kill me <coughs> I had it had it got, I relieved myself so and and then and it tracks and all that and that the God the God that was God in me he could see that I 
But I didn't, I didn't have any uh, rifles or anything, so he let me do my duty on the, the tracks. And I, I got back, uh, and uh, I'm trying to recollect some of the things. Uh, they had us in these, in these cars. They, they had about six, uh, six guards who were guarding us, and uh, half of the, half of the, half of the, the, the car was, was, was for, to capture troops. They captured a lot of troops at that time. So, uh, I don't know, uh, I'm trying to recollect some of the things. Well, anyway, uh, Uh, they they took us to some area I don't know some area and uh, I had to get rid of all my uh, clothing we had have had have heavy clothing and they gave us uh, light clothing it was, it was, it was in the winter time and, uh, and they put us in a cell and the cell was supposed to be good for one person they had six or eight of us in there and the next day they got us out and it's a good thing they didn't pick on me because I was Jewish. Because if they would have picked on me, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, they picked, uh, well, I'm trying to recollect some of the things. They picked on a few guys to get information from them as much as they could, but they didn't pick on me. So, uh, uh, in any event, when I got, when I got home, uh, somebody, a radar operator, had picked up, picked up information from my parents, and they told them that I was alive. <laughs> but they, but the, the military didn't want to say that I was alive, because they didn't have any actual facts. So, uh, I, I was sent to uh, to a camp in uh, in uh, northern Germany. Uh, it was a uh, it was a camp where they kept the prisoners. But uh, American uh, 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 I'm trying to get ahead of my story. Uh, those who were uh, who were uh, lieutenants and uh, and, uh, and captains and whatever, they kept them in a separate camp. So uh, trying to recollect like some of the things. So uh, we were there for uh, anyway. I was there for for 15 months, and. Uh, Towards the end, they segregated all the Jews and they put us in a separate barracks. Tell us a little bit about what were the conditions like? What kind of food did you get? Initially, we got parcels, which uh, uh, one parcel would be good for a whole week for one person. But initially, in the beginning, we got a parcel that was good. <laughs> we shared the, the food for eight people. And then eventually, we got no food. We got Orizas food, and Orizas uh, was a combination of, uh, I don't know what it was, but it uh, didn't taste good, but anyway, it was food. And uh, they segregated gay Jews, uh, and they had about close to 10,000 uh, uh, flight people that were shot down. and. Uh, they segregated us, and they were supposed to eliminate us. But <laughs> fortunately, uh, uh, the Russians came in, and they saved us. And they, uh, I'm trying to get ahead of myself, but I wouldn't be here today if they uh, if they didn't save us. But so anyway, the was liberated by Russians. By Russians, yeah. And. Uh, uh, trying to recollect, so they, they gave us all the food to eat, and a lot of guys were eating, and, and some of these guys wanted to get home, so they got out. I don't know what happened to them, 
But Eisenhower said we should stand by and he'll get us out. And there was a captured airfield nearby. And uh, after two weeks, they flew in the B-17s and they, uh, they got us out of there and we, went, we got to Paris. So, uh, I don't know, but then at that time we were still fighting, the, uh, fighting on the Pacific coast, the Japanese were still in the war. And uh, I suppose that with the training that they gave us, they, fit, they figured that we would have to fight the Japanese. Fortunately, <laughs> Fortunately, they uh, they got this uh, the atomic bomb. You know, they 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 lowered them and they killed a lot of people. And then uh, later on, they started to drop another one, and that uh, eliminated the Japanese. They gave up. So uh, I was lucky then to get back. Well, it's a long story. A lot of things I'm trying to recollect. Rec were you discharged? Rec I was, well, I was wounded partly. Okay. And, uh, and it took a long time till I, I was in the hospital for a while. And uh, I was discharged in uh, 1947. A lot of guys got out in 46, but uh, I needed treatment, uh, and so... Uh, Can you describe your wounds? How were you wounded? Well, part of it uh, was when they when I shot the plane down, uh, part of the shot was that directly, but it made me fragments from the plane or was on my chest and my head, and... Uh, <laughs> I, I I felt something I'm on, on my nose, and I see I'm bleeding, but I didn't feel any pain. <laughs> but uh, anyway, managed to get down, and uh, they treated me pretty good. And uh, uh, what was, did you receive medical treatment by the yeah, Germans? Yeah, no, by the Germans I didn't see any. You didn't receive any medical treatment no. at all. No, not at all. And I was afraid to get it medical treatment because I, I was afraid if they were giving a treatment, uh, I would never come back. So uh, I suffered them uh, maybe a month or six weeks to suffer them, but uh, all I could do, the others get aspirin from the, from the troops. They had some aspirin. And uh, the camp was expanding. And initially, when we came there, I don't know, we, we, were, we were placed in one compound and then they had a, made another kind. Each compound was, uh, they had about uh, 1,000 to, to 1,500 to 1,200 troops. And every time they got more captured troops, they built another compound. Well, uh, it just so happened that while they were building the, 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 uh, the detention camps, uh, it seems like a couple of guys escaped <laughs> and they were looking for them and they were trying to cover up for them and every time we move it, you know, we were in groups and uh, we would switch corners and they, and they would count us and count us over again and the count was not, not, not too good but uh, because we were switching different places and uh, anyway they, they discovered that uh, six or eight guys escaped I don't know if they escaped but they got through because the, the, there was different compounds being selected and uh, well Trying to re get recollect for some of those things. Okay. And then, <laughs> a lot of these things I try to forget about, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm trying to remember some of the things that uh, I had to do. You did, you've done very well. 
I want to go back a little bit. Um, you know, I know this is very early in your story. You were in the uh, the 44th New York when uh, the war broke out. Yeah. Um, where were you when you heard about Pearl Harbor? What I was was Pearl Harbor. Reaction? We were at Fort Lewis, Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I talking about? Uh, what's the name of that uh, post? Fort Lewis, Washington was was later on when they came. Uh, I forget the name of the. the you were on the east coast, though. I'm on the east coast. Okay. And, and uh, there was turmoil at that time when the when the Jap when the Japanese attacked us at Pearl Harbor. They sunk a lot of ships and all, and there was a lot of turmoil going on. What, was your, what were your personal feelings about this? When you found <laughs> well, they had me got a, a, a water tower. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they said, and they gave me a, a clip to, I never shot a gun before, and they told me uh, to shoot the hill if you don't not recognize it. Boy, I, then the troops, and they, they called the troops back. And uh, they identified themselves, and uh, I'm luckily uh, I didn't shoot anybody. Uh, but uh, getting ahead of myself. Well, no, that's okay. When uh, when you were on a B-17, um, were you with the same crew? No. Or well, I know you said you were replacing. Yeah, while. yeah. I was interchanged. I was never with the same crew. You were never on the same uh, never on the same plane. We had different planes. Some of the planes had turrets in the back of them, and some of them were F planes and and uh, G planes. Well, what was the difference? Uh, the, the difference: the G plane had a turret uh, in the front of for the uh, bombardier, so he could fire a gun. The uh, the uh, F plane didn't have it, so he had a. a Fire from a from a, from a, from a gun in the front plane, but I was very busy. I was busy all the time. I was <laughs> really dedicated. <laughs> These guys, uh, the who navigators, they were so scared when they got up there. They, they couldn't do any their navigation, and they were better than me. <laughs> so anyway. When, when the Russians, you were with the Russians for about two weeks after you were liberated? Uh, you mentioned that? The Russians. You said your okay. camp was liberated by the Russians. Uh, and it was about two weeks before you were flown out. You, yeah, you yeah. How did they treat you? What were your relations like well, with the Russians? Or? They, 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 they got all the cattle in the, in the area and they gave us all the food that we could eat and some of the guys uh, <laughs> got sick from eating too much <laughs> because they didn't eat for a long time. They had Arzach for the food, Arzach food that the Germans gave us. And, uh, well, I'm trying to recollect some of the things. Um, you said, um I noticed from your form you have two Purple Hearts. What was the other? Purple Heart? Well, one of those that I got shot yes, right. and, then, and the other one was from when I when I bailed out, they gave me another Purple Heart. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, I had two Purple Hearts. Incidentally, well, I we'll got... We'll get to that in a second. Um, were you aware of the concentration camps? No, in the concentration camps. We heard about it, but we we, we we had nothing to do with it. No, I was just wondering if you were aware of them. We were aware system. of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we were we were flying the uh, important targets at that time, and I never flew with the same crew. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, okay, why don't you show us what you have? I. Uh, This will give you a resume of, of uh, what I went through in the beginning. Yeah, okay. Do we have a copy of that? Do we have a copy of this? Or do you, uh, you, make a, you can make a copy of it if you want to. Yeah, I don't know if we do. Uh, 
But do we have a copy of that in, in no. this folder? No. Uh, no, I, this is the only copy no. I got. Okay, we'll, we'll see if we can make a copy. Um, uh, they must have a copy yeah. machine in there. Did you have any photographs of yourself? Of myself? I think we no. got some on uh, the other yeah. tape we did the oh, last okay. time. Okay. Um, Were you a member of the Caterpillar Club? <laughs> If you mail that and you come along, you 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 can join the Caterpillar Club, but uh, that was an incidental. Uh -huh. Because I I never believed I'd jump out of a plane. <laughs> it was pretty scary, but everything happens, you know. Yeah, well, you, 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 you know, you, you have no time to think, and. Uh, incidentally, the plane was on fire. The one in the engines was burning. And uh, we, uh, the pilot said we had to bail out, bail out. <laughs> I never thought I'd have to bail out. So I could see the pilots bailing out, and then uh, the bombardier was so scared. So I said, I pulled on his foot and I said, look, we got to get out. You do things automatically. I, I, I bailed out, I pulled the rip cord. And I'm holding the, the rip cord and I feel it, it's, nothing's going to happen. And all of a sudden, whoo, <laughs> and the chute opened up. I don't know, it must have taken me a, a, at least 15 minutes to get down. But uh, I had the oxygen base and it covered my face. And I could see that uh, uh, the Germans were coming back at me. And I thought he was going to shoot me down. He went down below me, he figured that I was dead, then he went over me, and then he went down, but I couldn't see because I had the oxygen mask on. And then when I, I landed, I landed in the snow. Uh, I, I think it was Austria, we, we, were, we landed in Austria. And then uh, my radio operator, he came to me for assistance. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I said, we'll sue it. Have you, uh, yeah. after the war, um, did you join any veterans organizations? Well, the Jewish War Veterans was around at that time. And uh, they wanted to have my story, but uh, I'm trying to recollect some of the things. Did everybody get out of the airplane? <laughs> I think they all got out of the airplane. We all, all, all bailed out. It took me a long time to come down. Mm -hmm. and, Did you, uh, uh, have you ever kept in contact with anyone that you were in No. <laughs> no. Yeah, especially since you were in different planes. Probably... Yeah, I was... Uh, we never flew with the same crew. I was uh, mm -hmm. a volunteer. And they, they, wake, they wake me up in the middle of the night, they say, the navigator is out. <laughs> we need you for his navigator. <laughs> and I was playing. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm very lucky to be here today. Yes. So, uh, well, I, uh, oh, did you uh, did you use the GI Bill at all when you got? Yes, out? I, I used the GI Bill. Uh, in fact, I, I got an electrical engineering degree oh. from the GI Bill. I'm trying to remember some of the things. How, how do you think your service affected your life, changed your life? Well, I never really took a, a thought about it, but uh, I'm trying to recollect some of the things lately. I, Uh, initially, we went across the uh, Atlantic Ocean. We didn't go, uh, most of the pilots were flying there, fly, we would fly across. And it took us, I don't know, about three weeks, and we landed in Casablanca. <laughs> and in Casablanca, they were showing the picture, the movie, uh, the Casablanca. <laughs> that was really funny. Did you uh, get to see any USO shows or any celebrities over there? Uh, not really. Not really. They needed a bunch of navigators. And then uh, 
They flew us out of Casablanca. We flew to uh, Algiers, and then from Algiers uh, we uh, we flew to Tunis, Italy. Uh, trying to recollect a lot of things. In any event, in any event, I'm lucky to be alive. Yeah. Well, thank you very We're glad much. to have you. Uh, I'll see if I can get copies of this. Uh,